Since we've covered directional air roll and air dribbles, it's only fitting that we work on the next step in advanced aerial mechanics, flip resets. They are flashy, they're difficult, but I believe they are more than just a vanity mechanic that deserves some time to training them. Whether that's to be able to pull them off consistently or just to understand the process, both have value and are very much worth your time. In this video, I'm going to cover how resets work, how to get a reset, what to do once you've gotten the reset, and when to use them, as well as a couple of really good tips and tricks you can use to help pull them off more consistently. Now, I'm going to assume that since you clicked on this video, you already know what a flip reset is and I've left the timestamp in the description that jumps straight into how to train them. For the uninitiated, a flip reset is when your car gains its ability to jump or flip after touching the underside of the car's hitbox on a solid surface. That could be the wall, the ceiling, or in this case, the ball. Now, the common sentiment is that the flip is gained by pressing all four wheels on the ball. This isn't actually true and is instead achieved when the ball makes contact with the bottom of the car's hitbox at the center of mass. That said, for the purposes of understanding what to do and to give yourself a tangible visual reference of where to make contact on the ball, attempting to land all four tires is going to yield the best results. As is tradition, I don't just want to turn you loose on training flip resets without first giving you some scaffolding steps to build up to the final mechanic. There are a good handful of things I believe are not just important to learning and becoming consistent at flip resets, but are incredibly valuable tools in your overall car control that you'll be able to implement at various different aspects of your game. So first things first, we need to talk about bindings. For the best result, you're going to want to have a bound directional air roll. Either left or right will work, and as always, you're encouraged to pick whichever one you prefer. That said, yes, you can do this with standard air roll, but I'll warn you, unless you are highly proficient in using it, those seeking the best and simplest forms of controlling the Z-axis rotation of the car will have a much easier time with directional air roll since it automatically turns the car for you without any additional stick inputs. Now that we have our bindings, let's take a hot second and go over something I haven't found anyone else talk about, but it's, in my opinion, something everyone should take into consideration when trying to perform this mechanic. Because of the physics of Rocket League, a lot of the game's interactions can be thought of either as controlling the direction of momentum or the transfer of momentum from one object to another. While we'll certainly be getting into the latter with the execution portion of the reset tutorial, we first need to look at the former, controlling momentum. Before we get into controlling the momentum of the car as it flies in the air towards the ball, we need to break it down even further and discuss input accelerated movement. As if Rocket League's ball and car physics aren't enough to deal with, we also have input accelerated movement, meaning that the car, when given a directional input while in the air, does not start at its full movement speed and instead ramps up to its full speed over the course of a second. So if I jump, hold my left stick to the right, you can see that my car begins to turn slowly and then takes a moment to reach its full turning speed. Now here's the next bit of totally awesome information, pre-established momentum. Once I let go of my directional input, my car still continues to turn on an established course of movement before coming to a stop. That doesn't just apply to stick movement, but it also applies to directional air roll, just not at the same level. Another thing to note is that we can actually speed up this process in regards to things like backflips and front flips by boosting at certain points during the rotation, something that we can use to our advantage as we start going for resets. Regardless, why I'm bothering to mention any of this is because when you're up in the air, adjusting your car to make contact for a flip reset, knowing that you actually need to let go of your input sooner than you might think could be the difference between getting your reset or bouncing only two of your wheels off the ball. Okay, so now that we've got all that out of the way, let's start training our resets. As always, I've put together a progressive pack that you can use to follow along with this video or come back to if you need some references. Before we get into those, however, let's talk about where we want to be making contact on the ball. You can get a reset anywhere on the ball, but just because we got one doesn't mean you'll be able to do anything with it. For that, we'll want to focus on making contact that provides both the reset and the best recovery for a follow-up. Ideally, we want to be making contact on the lower third of the ball. I found that attempting to make contact on the ball with my back wheels at around the equator or halfway line of the ball gives me the best results. This ensures that when I make contact, I won't be bouncing the ball away from me and will stay on a relative flight path with the ball. If you're more on top of the ball, you're more likely to hit it down and away from you and will be unable to make a good follow-up. Likewise, too far underneath the ball isn't great either since you'll be carrying the car's momentum through the reset and will now be ahead of the ball instead of behind it for your follow-up. The best way I've found to start training flip resets doesn't actually involve the ball. Instead, I'd like you to look at resets the same way you would ceiling shots. If you go about them the same way, you can effectively train the movements needed to put your car in position for a reset. Shot 1 is set up so that you can drill these movements. Simply jump off the wall just after the half pipe, boost towards the ceiling, and try to make contact with the ceiling with your wheels as flush as possible. Remember to hold power slide as you make contact because this will be important later. 
For those who are more comfortable with air roll, then you'll want to be aware that depending on which wall you start from can determine whether or not you need more or less rotation during the setup portion. For example, since I primarily use air roll left, coming off the right wall means that I have to roll my car over one and a half times, whereas on the left wall, I only need to roll it over once. Regardless, drilling these movements will be incredibly beneficial to you once you start going for resets off the ball. Feel free to try and go for shots once you get the movement down since this will be great practice flipping into the ball while controlling your car in the air. The first handful of shots will have you and the ball starting from the ground. First and foremost, I'd like your main focus on these to be to obtain the reset. Bonus points if you can score from any of these setups, but the goal is just to practice the movements needed to set up the car to get the reset. What makes this drill so beneficial is that, just like the flick or a fast aerial, you can train these movements to the point of muscle memory. Even though we'll be starting from the ground, all of these principles and timings perfectly translate to attempting these off the wall. Since the best time to make contact with the ball is when it's up in the air, reaching the apex or the peak of its upward arc, we can drill our timings on a smaller scale and work our way up. Because I like to use visual references as much as possible, I want to share what's worked best for me. For the first shot, we want to jump and boost into the air, attempting to match the height of the ball. A good indication of when to stop boosting is as the ball's reaching zero Gs at the top of its flight. Just before it would begin to start falling, this is when we want to start rotating our car in anticipation to make contact. Keeping in mind the aforementioned accelerated movement and momentum, you'll want to rotate your car with air roll and pull the nose of the car down towards the ground. I recommend doing each of these movements one at a time. As you get more comfortable, you'll be able to pitch the car down and rotate at the same time, but if you're just getting into training these for the first time or have been struggling in the past, then this is what I suggest. You'll want to be doing all of this relatively close to the ball. Spacing is important since we want to be close enough to make contact but not so far away that we're trying to catch up to the ball and potentially bounce it too far away. Again, we aren't trying to score these. This is strictly a drill meant to familiarize yourself with the timing and execution. Shot 3 is the same as shot 2, only this time the distance we have to travel is a bit more exaggerated. You'll now have to fly higher and further to gain a reset. Shots 4 and 5 are also similar to one another, but simulate more of what an air dribble into a reset scenario might look like in a game. You can either go straight for the reset off the jump, or if you'd like to do so from an air dribble, then you'll want to keep two things in mind. First being that height is better than speed for these. With the ball more up in the air, you'll have more time and opportunities to get a reset and thus options on how to follow it up. Second, you'll want to be focusing on spacing. Boosting into the ball a bit can help create that spacing, but you'll want to be cautious not to hit it so far away that you can't catch up to it and get a reset. Admittedly, shot 6 is where I anticipate people will spend most of their time since this is what we would consider the traditional wall-to-air dribble setup. The beauty with this setup is that I've placed everything in a way that allows for total beginners and more adept players to get the most out of this one shot. I have a lot of things that I want to discuss here since this is what most of you will be going for, so let's dig in. How do we set up a flip reset? As we previously mentioned, spacing is one of the most important aspects of getting a reset. We need to hit the ball hard enough for the touch to register the reset, so having room to build up a little bit of speed before contact is ideal. There are a ton of different ways to create spacing from the ball, and each varied depending on the angle, setup, and speed. For now, let's go over the simplest ways to do this. Simply jumping the moment after you make contact or even during contact does a great job of popping the ball out off the wall and creates the spacing needed to move in for a reset. Now that we have the ball in the air, we need to line ourselves up for the reset. I encourage practicing each one of these as it never hurts to be able to do this in as many different ways as you can. You only benefit to gain more control overall, so don't feel like any version of this is less valuable than another. To start, I recommend popping the ball off the wall and in the air, rolling the car into what I would call a neutral position, in which the car is up and in the air with the wheels facing away from you. Just like we did on the ground, this is your opportunity to make sure that you are in line with the ball's flight path and ensure you only need to make minimal adjustments to your car for the reset. Same as before, we want to float up or boost up with the ball until it begins to lose its upwards momentum. Roll the car over, pull back on the nose, and give a short puff of boost into the ball. For the first few of these, don't concern yourself with trying to score, but instead continue to focus on just getting the setup and contact as consistently as you can. From this setup, you don't even have to air roll if you don't want to. Simply jumping off the wall and flying towards the ball backwards is another great method to practice, just keeping in mind that you'll want to do all the other things the exact same way, matching the ball's height, pulling down on the nose, and boosting just a little before contact. A lot of being able to successfully get a flip reset involves a great deal of anticipation. Just like going for a regular aerial hit, we want to spot in the air where we anticipate making contact with the ball. What makes this difficult, of course, is the number of adjustments we have to make to our car in order to put the car in the correct position and orientation necessary to get a flip reset. 
As you continue training this mechanic, both with the shots in this pack and in free play, you'll want to be looking towards how and where you could meet the ball in the air. Much like going for air dribbles, how you follow the ball either off the wall or from the ground will be crucial. For this reason, you'll want to make sure that you're lining yourself up with the anticipated flight path before you begin using a large amount of boost and adjustments. A great tip I found was that if you need to boost either to reposition or catch up to the ball, try and only do so when your nose is pointing towards the ball whether that's right side up or upside down. Now then, we've practiced our setups, our movements to get the car in position, and have begun getting resets. What the hell do we do with it? Before we answer that question, we first need to address another aspect of flip resets that other tutorials don't mention, which is what to do while we're getting the reset. That's right. There are things you could be doing during the moment of contact that can affect how you both get your reset and how you'll be able to follow it up. In this regard, I'd like to present the argument that flip resets are as much of a recovery mechanic as they are an offensive one. By thinking of it in this way, we can apply things we know about recoveries to flip resets. The next thing is something that I spoke about earlier, which is accelerated movement. Since you're going to be colliding with an object, impeding your car's established momentum, turning and adjusting out of the reset means you'll have to do so from square one in most cases. From my knowledge, there are two ways to combat this. First, as previously mentioned, directional air roll ramps up to its full rotation speed much quicker and thus can be used the moment after making contact to reposition for a follow-up. The second is landing on the ball while holding your left stick either left or right, turning your car on its x-axis before, during, and after impact. Doing so ensures that the momentum of the spin remains intact during impact and can then be used to recover and take a shot. Like I mentioned, thinking about flip resets the same way you think about recoveries can lead to looking at how to get them differently. Whether that's from an air dribble with low boost or needing to land on one of the sides of the ball depending on where you need to be for your follow-up. Regardless, there is no one way to get a reset. Players like Arsenal even started approaching them for more straight on, only pulling back before contact to get a reset instead of rolling the car over beforehand. The fact is, as long as the bottom side center of mass makes contact with the ball, you'll gain a reset. What you do with it afterwards is up to you. I regret that this doesn't apply to everyone, but for my PC players, you have some really great tools at your disposal that I wanted to bring up and can help you in your training process. Both are part of the Bacchus Mod plugin, so if you don't already, you'll want to download that. The first thing is the car color flip indicator found in the free play tab. This will change your car's color depending on whether or not you have a flip available. The great thing about this is that when you're going for flip resets, the car will instantly change colors the moment you have a flip again. This is a great training tool since you won't have to guess whether or not you got a flip since the game will automatically provide that feedback for you. The second is going to be an additional plugin called Free Play Checkpoint. This can be used to either practice your setup, your touch into your reset, or my favorite, setting it the moment after you get your reset so you can practice recovery and follow up. Regardless of platform, I have a shot included in the training pack that starts you off in the air in which you'll need to boost towards the ball and flip into it for a goal. I recommend trying this inverted as well as spinning so that you can gain some experience into how your car moves and in what direction you'll go once you've initiated a flip in the air. I hope this video helps you on your journey to learning flip resets. I know I've gained a lot of consistency and perspective after working through a lot of this stuff in this video, so please let me know in the comments how it goes for you. I have plenty more to come regarding Rocket League mechanics, so I hope you'll stay tuned, and until next time, get out there and work on your flip resets.